Hello there guys, how's things going now? I really do hope that you're keeping well. I just wanted to put together a short video talking about a feature in SharpCap for kind of planetary live stacking, which I touched upon a little while back, but back then the feature was a little bit young, if you like, and now it's matured quite a bit. So let's jump in, I'm going to show you exactly what we're talking about right here. So what we're looking at, of course, is the mighty Jupiter, with my Edge HD11 with a 2 times Barlow and the ASI 676MC planetary camera. Uh, and this is just a live stack, so I haven't done really any stacking at all, just other than what SharpCap is doing on the fly with a rolling stack. It's a really cool feature. Now, if you want to get uh, SharpCap and have a go at this yourself, then by all means do so. I love the software. But basically what you're going to want to do is get yourself in focus on your target and ready to go. That's the first things that you need to do before you start using this feature. So you can see I'm just going to go ahead and nudge Jupiter towards the middle of my region of interest. And I say region of interest deliberately. I'm not using the full frame size of the camera. So that would look something like this. This is the full frame of my little camera right here. I'm instead using a, a reasonably small region of interest, 888 by 888. Now I've already gone ahead and focused before I started recording mm -hmm. this video and I've got quite a short exposure as well as not too high gain. You've got to do a kind of a balancing act with this where let's say you don't want mega short exposures and then have to use, you know, really high gain, which makes the image quite noisy. You're gonna have to stack a ton of frames to get that noise out. But at the same time, you don't want too low gain and then too long exposures, which would become a lot more blurred by the atmospheric conditions. So you can see right here, I'm at 80 milliseconds. It's just a little bit long. So what I've been going for is around about 20 milliseconds and then a gain setting to match, which in my case right here is about 250 gain. Looks good to me. No highlights are being blown out. It seems to be fine. Anyway, all that said, that's your kind of setup. You can see the planet's roughly centered, so we are just about good to go. So what you're looking for is the little icon up there, start lunar solar planetary live stacking. Just go ahead and click that. Now it's gonna come on, uh, actually not looking quite like this. It will be a 100 stack. Um, I'll reset that. Your frame filtering, I think defaults to about the best 50 percent of frames so we'll start with that as well i'm just going to make sure everything's reset and i'll talk you through making the adjustments on the fly uh one setting i would say to make uh, use of if you do have a kind of wavery um mount is on the stabilization and alignment right here you can probably use track planet with camera region of interest so it'll move that region of interest around and as long as it's reasonably close to being on axis you should be just about getting the full performance of your scope um, and also what probably isn't take to start with the realign color channels i've found it to be useful you may not try it that's the uh, that's the best advice i would say now once you do have some settings that you're happy with you can go ahead and use one of these slots and work through from there but i'm just going to tell you what i'm doing why i'm doing it and hopefully you can see live on screen what adjustments I'm making them what they're doing. So back to tab number one, sharpening and adjustments. And I'm going to just begin straight away by using wavelet level one and just move it up and see what effect we have. It's not doing an awful lot to the image. As you can see, if I take it right the way up, it's adding a lot of granularity. So wavelet level one, not the one for me at this, but I can tell you that it was without a barlow. It was a much more useful wavelet. Wavelet level two, start bringing this across now that's a lot better but we are introducing a lot of noise as you can see because this is just a 100 frame stack it's it's tiny we're not going to continue using that but i think we can go ahead and set our wavelet by going too far and dragging it back down just a little bit to the point where noise is no longer completely taken over but a lot of details still being preserved so that for me is around about there i will try wavelet free effect that that's having so if i take it too far you can see it's a little bit extreme uh it's not having too much of an effect for me it seems to be maybe a small amount of contrast leaping out from the cloud bands that kind of thing and now i've got some wavelet 2 applied i'm going to take another look at wavelet 1 doesn't really seem to be doing much 
on this image. So uh, now I've got quite a noisy little image. I am going to start to use denoise on this. I'll just use it maxed out. As you can see, that's the effect of that. And if you're unhappy with the brightness and color, do try auto brightness and color. And in my case, I often find it's useful to boost saturation a little bit. So that great red spot is well, red, <laughs> as you would expect, especially if you were doing some outreach, that kind of thing, and showing, you know, passers-by or uh, interested parties, this kind of thing, you'd they'd probably expect to see it looking a bit more red. Uh, so anyway, that's your sharpening and adjustments just about set up. Now we want to take a look at frame filtering. As I said, it's going to come on not very aggressive. Uh, I want to actually make it a little bit more... Um, What's the word? Discriminatory, perhaps. It's going to actually get rid of three out of four frames that come in now, on average. And it's going to calculate that quality statistic over 250 incoming frames. So it's going to take a look at every frame for a rolling 250 and decide what is the best ones out of those and then go ahead and stack them. You can increase that as well if you should wish, but I found 250 to be a deep, like kind of a sweet spot for me. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and use these target stack length and increase that. So it's currently 100. The kind of bigger this stack gets, the less noise we're going to have. Uh, but it's going to be less of a, a live view. If you will, it's still really rather live given how fast this stack is building up. And if you want to leave it on the screen, it will continue to refresh itself. Um, it's quite an odd thing to watch actually. I know you can see the great red spot here just rotating into view. Uh, I've just been sat here before making this video for a good 35 minutes or so, watching the great red spot come from around here all the way to where it is right now. I've watched a moon transit off the edge of the surface. Um, it's pretty incredible. And the fact is, for me at least, I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a lot of fun doing this. I'm having more fun doing this than I would making lots of individual captures of videos um you know and then stacking them up using auto stacker and then processing them in regis stacks etc like you usually do not that there's anything wrong with that approach i will say um but doesn't this seem to work well <laughs> for me it certainly does i'm seeing a hell of a lot of detail uh, and if you do have you know a moment that you want to see and save uh go ahead and just hit save as seen and if you do have settings that you want to come back to like i talked about in the beginning I see you found this useful. You know that for your planetary camera on your telescope with your Barlow, these settings worked really well last time. We'll just save them to a slot. You can come back to them anytime you would like. Uh, and I found that that's really nifty. It's quite clearly a well fleshed out tool at this point. And uh, my word, it works so well. I, um, I've got nothing bad to say about it. These are the sort of planetary images I wish I could have caught just a few years ago and now I'm doing it live on the fly. <laughs> Come on. Sharp Cap is getting so good these days. Uh, the amount of detail on display from a, a nice telescope is incredible. Uh, who knows what you could see with something like a C14 or maybe a great big, you know, Dobsonian. That kind of thing. Uh, I'd probably be blowing my socks clean off, I imagine. But anyway, I wanted to just put some kind of praise really onto this software and also make you guys aware because my word obviously we're all on it at the minute Jupiter Saturn etc this planetary season is very much in swing for most of us guys uh and I'm enjoying it hopefully you are too and that's why I wanted to kind of shine a spotlight on this very quickly so thank you very much indeed for watching apologies for the slightly chaotic video I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you have some fun with this do let me know in the comments down below if you have a go by the way I'd love to hear how you found it to use um oh one last thing before i go uh this is something quite important i think it looks like the longer your focal length probably the more of later wavelengths that you're going to want to use so let's say if you were imaging at 10,000 mils with a quite a small pixel camera so a very fine sampling ratio you'd be looking more at wavelengths two three four for me here at uh 5600 mil focal length wavelet two is the predominantly useful one Back without the Barlow at 2800 mil focal length wavelet one was the most useful wavelet for me so uh, you know don't just copy my settings kind of thing just experiment keep your eye on the screen and look at what's working for you that's uh, my best advice anyway gone on way too long thank you very much for watching look after yourselves guys as always it's been a pleasure Gliss guys